Yeah. So that's that's a great question. Um, I can understand this allure of wanting to know uh, if you have actually acquired the ability to develop these antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 virus after being vaccinated. But I think it's it's really important that that you understand that the tests that are actually available in the market today can you know, confirm certain things, but it also cannot confirm many things. And this is the exact reason why the regulatory authorities like the US FDA and also the CDC recommendations do not recommend this test to be evaluate, to be used to evaluate an individual's immunity against COVID-19. And this is because of two factors. The first is the reliability of these tests. Um, there are quite a number of antibody tests on the market. And the reality is that the type and range of the antibodies that is actually being tested vary across various different tests. And as a result, the ability to accurately detect the levels of antibodies in your body at a given time varies considerably. So the specificity is really uh, not accurate. And so there is a moderate to high risk of false positives or false negatives. So if you test, oh, I can detect antibodies, you are still not sure whether you have actually detected the right antibodies. Or if you actually get a test to say, oh no, you don't have any antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, you're quite not sure whether the test falsely gave you a negative result. And this is really disconcerting. The second is the test, what is it actually testing? First of all, right, these tests only predict the levels of certain types of antibodies. But antibodies alone do not accurately reflect your immunocompetence, your ability to mount an immune response, especially when you have a real infection. And you have to think about the immune system more than the antibodies. When we talk about our response against COVID-19, we talk about what is called an adaptive immune response. And this adaptive immune response is complex. It involves the interplay of different types of cells and factors that are not captured by this antibody test. Another important thing is that your antibody levels today will vary day after tomorrow or in two weeks time because these antibody levels rise and fall at different times. And our body reacts to these vaccines differently. And so the timing in which you do this test also is going to be very, very critical. So really important for you to understand that your antibody test does not really measure your, your ability to develop a T cell response, which is also very important against viruses. The ability of your memory cells that when there's an infection, because those antibody tests don't actually measure that. So apart from satisfying curiosity, I would actually tell you that because of the lack of robust scientific evidence to support the suitability of this test as an effective measure of immunocompetence, I would not recommend anyone to undergo this test, especially if the primary purpose is to only find out if you have developed effective immune protection against COVID-19. Because even if there is antibodies, you don't actually know whether the antibodies can target. Even if you don't have antibodies, you don't know whether when you actually have COVID-19, whether you will actually develop those antibodies. So for me, it's really, really important. And I'm glad you have actually asked this question. I'm sorry, I, I don't know who you are. If not, I would have addressed you. But it's really, really important that we are aware of the limitations of this test and the danger when we wrongly interpret this test. And now they're asking, without tests, how will we know if the vaccine is working? Yeah, you know, one of the reasons why people want to get tests has always been the fact that, you know, especially in Malaysia and a lot of Asian you know, uh, uh, individuals, and maybe just human curiosity, we always want to test, how do I know I'm good at maths? Only if I get an A, that's why I know I've got, I'm, you know, I'm good at it. Um, in the case of, you know, this whole idea of vaccination, right, and, and, and what it is, right, because it is very clear, right, vaccination alone 
is not sufficient. You need to have all these other complementary layers, such as you know wearing a mask and you know ensuring that the public health measures bring down the risk of infections to a level you know that is sufficiently low. You know the question is not so much how do I measure, but ask yourselves why is it really important to measure. The question should be about how can I actually reduce my risks and how can I maybe encourage scientists to come up with better tests? If there was a good enough test that can actually tell you how immunocompetent you are and tell you that your result, when it's positive, it's positive, when it's negative, it's negative, and therefore go and get a booster shot, it's a reliable test, then it is worthwhile getting tests. So when I'm suggesting you know, and questioning the need for testing, it is not because I feel that you should not satisfy your curiosity and there's no value in testing. I'm just alluding to the reality that the current tests are just not sufficiently reliable to give you an actionable response. And because you can't really do anything with that test, I call into question, what's the value of the test? But I'm really confident because there are so many researchers and so many teams that are actually trying to improve that test. There's so many studies that are actually been done in many different universities to actually try and see how can we improve this test, much like how we have improved the ability to detect our viruses. In the past, it's whether the virus is positive you know, or negative. Now we are also can identify the strains, we can do whole genomic sequencing, and we can be more specific and be able to provide you know, more detailed information. I seek your patience that until we have this reliable test, please question its utility. Follow-up question to that then, you know, how did the scientists, you know, you talk about like, it's not the test that we have so far is not in, uh, is ineffective, but how did the scientists know the level of antibodies developed after each vaccination and booster if there were not any antibodies test done? Yeah, so you must remember that the data that actually is coming out from the research labs, right, are very different from the data that's actually coming from a single test point. The, the research labs undergo multiple different tests. They don't use a diagnostic test. It actually goes through very complex experiments to actually test every single subpopulation and different type of antibodies and, and takes a lot of painstaking analysis that will not cost a hundred ringgit or 200 ringgit. It will cost a few thousand ringgits and it's also highly sensitive to be used for a diagnostic purpose. So it's a very, very good question. The question is the test that you actually do in the market, is it the same that's actually being used in research where they actually also calculate the size of the cells, the morphology of the cells, to identify how many population of B cells, T cells, memory cells. And that actually gives you that confidence that the kind of antibody measures are accurate. And it's also a time cost measurement, not just measure, measured on a single day. When we talk about 14 days after vaccination, that is an average response. It does not allude to that for some people, it might be the 13th day, it might be the 16th day, it might be the 17th day. And that is why it's important to recognize that we transition to an endemic. It does not mean that our behavior on the 14th day should be any different than our behavior on the 24th day or on the 34th day or on the 140th day. Our behavior is going to be dependent on the environment that actually uh, we live in.